Welcome to this onboarding video, which is going to introduce you to the core concept behind routing. So the first aspect I want to talk about is centralizing your work. As you might have seen on our website, the idea is that your work today is scattered among many tools. You probably have an email client with multiple accounts, you probably use chat systems, it could be Slack, WhatsApp, Telegram, Discord, whatever, and you probably use other tools. It could be Figma if you are a designer, it could be a project management tool such as Notion, Coda, Asana, if you're working within a team. My point being that your work is scattered among those tools and it's quite difficult to have an overview of everything you need to do uh, at a single point in time because of uh, because you don't have this kind of 360 uh, degree overview. And that actually impacts your ability to prioritize and plan. So what we want to do with routine is actually use your calendar as the central place because that's how you plan and you manage your time. And so what we want is to bring your work next to it. And so the way we achieve this is on one side through integration. So if you go to settings in routine and then integration, you will see a bunch of them. Some are bi-directional, like Notion, meaning that you connect to Notion to bring your task from some of your databases. If you change something in Notion, it will reflect in routine. If you change something in routine, it will reflect back in Notion. Other integrations are one way, like Gmail, where you start an email, it actually creates a task in routine. Just know that for now, Gmail is not yet available uh, uh, to everybody. It is ready, but we are in the process of validating it with Google. Hopefully, by the time you watch this, this video, it will be available. Likewise, if you go to the calendar here, it is an integration with Google Calendar and same thing, it is bi-directional. If you change something in Google Calendar, it will reflect in routine. If you create an event in routine, it will create it also in Google Calendar. So one way is to bring through those integrations into a routine. But as you can see, we don't have that many yet. A lot more are going to come in the coming month. Until then, you can use Zapier, uh, which allows you to basically connect through other, I mean, all of these other services, more than 5,000 that you use on a daily basis. Could be your favorite project management tool or your habit tracker or whatever. You can connect them to routine through Zapier. So you can check Zapier out uh, at zapier.com. And more specifically, uh, it, through our knowledge base, if you go to integrations, uh, you will see that uh, we have a specific page for Zapier and we have actually a catalog of the most common uh, zaps, as it is called. So with to do is Notion, ClickUp, YouTube, Jira, and so on and so forth. All of those you can connect through Zapier to Routine. Very powerful for bringing stuff into Routine. Now, this is until we develop a specific integration with those apps, in which case it will be more, it will be more powerful. Now, we also have an app on uh, mobile. As you can see, you can download apps here. And so uh, the app on mobile, just iOS for now, Android is coming a bit later is really, really useful for remembering things on the go. So you could be basically walking down the street, you're thinking about something, just open the app, tap on the plus button, type something, and that's it. You will have remembered something for later. But the iOS app also comes with the widgets, which are really great for glancing at your day, your task to do, uh, the events to come, and so on, but also uh, with the share extension which is a way to save information coming from other apps. It could be maybe a, a message on WhatsApp that you want to remember for later. It could be a web article that you want to read later as well. You can save those from Chrome browser or WhatsApp through the share extension by selecting routine and saving. So very, very useful. The last thing I want to talk about when it comes to bringing information into routine is the hotkey. So the dashboard in particular. So I'm going to talk about this hotkey, but I really, really need to emphasize the fact that the hotkey is specific to the desktop experience. 
What I mean is that if you use the web app, you will not have access to this functionality. And because it is so core to the experience, I really, really encourage you to install the app on Windows or Mac OS to benefit from this functionality. Let me show you. So as you can see on my Mac, I've got many, many uh, um, uh, uh, spaces. That's a detail. I'm going to use one which is empty to emphasize the fact that um, you don't need to be on the routine app to actually use that hotkey. So that hotkey is control space, but you can change the, the keyboard shortcut to anything you want. Now, if you press control space, it will bring forward an overlay that we call the dashboard. And the dashboard summarizes everything you need to know about your productivity at the time, which are the task of the day and the upcoming events. Now, the key thing here is that the, the hotkey is really, really quick to trigger and the dashboard hence comes in a fraction of a second. So whenever you're thinking, oh, what do I have to do today? All you have to do is bring the, the dashboard and you will be able to check what you have to do. Instead of going to your browser, clicking on the tab to go to your to-do list uh, 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 somewhere else, which takes a few clicks and is just too long. Same thing for your events. You can see what's coming up next very, very quickly. You don't have to go to see your seven day calendar to know that. Now in the middle, we also have what we call the console. The console is a way to interact with routine very quickly through natural language uh, um, uh, and to basically trigger very common actions. The most common action is really just to remember something. You could be in a call like I am right now, basically recording this video and something pops into my mind and I'm like, oh, I need to call John. All I have to do is open the dashboard, type call John and press enter. So really to remember something, it really takes just a fraction of a second. It could be send invoice to Airbnb and press enter and that's it. I just created a task. Once again, I didn't have to go to my browser, click on a tab, click on a plus button and then start typing, which is too slow. Uh, you might actually have forgotten what you wanted to type by then. So again, whenever you want to uh, save something, open the dashboard, type something, press enter, that's it. It is really, really powerful. Now, the thing is that what I just did by pressing enter is actually activated the, activating the first action here, which is create a task, as you can see with the checkbox, with the name and save it in my inbox. You will see the inbox in a minute, but think of the inbox as a second memory. It's stuff that you might need to do later that you will need to organize. It's really a bit messy there. Okay? But the thing is that you don't always want to save into your inbox because sometimes you know exactly when something should get done. So that's why you can use, again, the natural language capabilities of the console. You could say, I don't know, call lawyers. And you could use the on keyword followed by spate, and you can enter any date. It could be on Friday, on Monday, it could be tomorrow, it could be today, it could be on the 1st of December 2029, basically any date. If I validate the date, you can see that the actions have changed. And now the first one is create and schedule call lawyers for Saturday, December 1st, 2029. So scheduling basically means that you will create the task and the task will be put with all the other tasks for that day. When that day comes, the task will become visible and you will be able to work on it. Okay? Now, because on tomorrow and on today are a bit strange in English and also a bit long, you can actually use tomorrow and today directly. It's the same thing and it's faster and those are the most common. If I press enter and I reopen the dashboard, you can see that call lawyers is not part of the task of the day. All good. But there is another scenario which, as far as I know, only routine really supports. The thing is that most people plan on a weekly basis. And so that's why in routine we have a mechanism which we call postpone. Let me show you. Let's say call accountants this time. Now you can do this second action here, which is create and postpone the task to this week. 
Now, what does that mean? Well, it basically means that postponing is the equivalent of scheduling, except that you schedule to a day and you postpone to a week. As simple as this. So the task will be created and put with all the other tasks of the week in question. And once again, you can use natural language. You could say this week or next week or in nine weeks. The task will be put in a kind of a bucket with all the tasks of that week. And again, when that week comes, the task will become visible. I'm going to keep it simple and save the task for this week. In a minute, you will see where the task lands in the user interface. So to summarize, you can save for later in your inbox. You can put it in a specific day by scheduling or in a specific week by postponing.